first of all how was your day uh, i just finished my office meeting and uh i took a small break and <laughs> i'm here again on zoom so basically my entire day was here on zoom uh, i had a meeting in morning and then lunch and then afternoon session and other meetings so that's how my day was how about you uh for me it's quite opposite because uh here it is now 10:45 so just i woke up just a while ago and then i and then i just woke up and i took a breakfast and that's okay. all because okay. of due to a covid we're having partial lockdown here so it's not mm. encouraged to go out much and also work from home study from home everything from home yeah, this covid so has changed this what's uh, going on yeah Uh, I was saying this COVID thing has changed yeah, exactly. a lot uh, our lifestyle and everything. Uh, yeah, definitely, it has changed a lot. Uh, I mean, a lot. You can't okay. imagine. So let me give your introduction. Um, you are Eman from Bangladesh, and you are living and studying in Germany. And as you know about me, I am Omer, and I am originally from Pakistan. I live in Hong Kong. and i'm working here and we have already talked several times on bangladesh pakistan related issues so how are you feeling about it well it's a very crummy topic to discuss about actually also many people don't know the real um, thing about it and mm. everyone have a distorted idea about this uh thing what happened in the past mm. uh we in bangladesh uh, we got a history of course which is very much based from our perspective highlighting our good things yeah. and i'm very much sure that what i heard from like my fellow pakistani colleagues or friends and they have said what they have studied in pakistan studies mm. is definitely not uh, enough yeah. uh to come in some sort of conclusions and you also have an indian narration so all thing is just puzzled up and real thing is not so clear till now i think yeah so uh, see honestly speaking like overall history always have uh, different perspectives from different people you won the war you won the battle you are the one writing history so you would never know the other side of the story so in this uh, situation and today's scenario uh, not only in case of pakistan and bangladesh or pakistan in india uh, it's almost everywhere that there are always two perspectives um, being taught basically in the schools or even if it's not in the schools every country have its own national narrative uh, i always give example of uh, uh, second world war because uh currently i'm working on some research i'm doing some research work on the history and culture of bangladesh uh, sorry 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 <laughs> uh history and culture of hong kong uh <laughs> since we're talking okay. about bangladesh so i just went right. there <laughs> okay so history and culture of uh, hong kong uh and also because hong kong was also being occupied by japanese forces during the second world war so all what we see in history is mostly the narrative of uh, allied forces the us and other countries which were in that alliance uh, were fighting against germany and japan so we always see their perspective of war uh, but we never see what is japanese perspective and what are their justifications uh, what do they think that why they started the war in asia and then how they why they took over all these countries here so they also have something to say about it so we cannot say that either one of them is entirely right uh, there are things that uh, could be wrong on both sides uh, but we should listen to both sides as and that's what i do in my work so i'm quoting it because it applies to pakistan bangladesh things as well uh, i have taken much time now uh, i should give you chance to talk uh, but just to take uh, this discussion further Uh, i agree that there are always uh, two different narratives and both need to be studied uh, yes so what would you say hmm. yeah you you basic you exactly pointed very much right uh, because different pe- people or different elements of the history will have their own perspective of course but the thing is that when we are teaching the kids of our school i mean when, for example a thing happened in a century ago or 
or a decade ago, mm. when we are teaching this thing to our kids in the school, then we have to teach a different perspective to them. Otherwise, they will grow up with a wrong notion. Mm. Uh, because the next decisions they will take, take in their life or their thought process will be very much shaped by those, um, those things that has been taught in the class or, or in the lectures. Mm. Um, so I think that different perspective should be taught in school level. Yeah. Uh, which is currently not present in Bangladesh and uh, Pakistan. Yeah, so Eamon, uh, you must have studied in Bangladesh during your schooling, uh, your school time or college time. You can, uh, uh, you can really share with me and with us uh, that uh, what really, what do you think that was really wrong with the education system, uh, especially in light of this Pakistan-Bangladesh thing or the liberation war. And then I would also share you my experience that what do, uh, we were taught and uh, what we are being taught now. Uh, so we, we can share uh, something on that. Yeah, sure. Uh, like uh, when I was in school there, uh, we, we, what we studied, especially about this Pakistan, I mean, uh, in 1971 incident, we, we, studied about the six point demand given by Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and then when he was arrested and uh, we knew about the 1969 uh, election and his winning and then not allowing him to take take the post of the prime minister of Pakistan and then of course uh, this 25th March that operation searchlight we know about that and then, of course, the fight and how the Mukti Bahini, how brave they were, um, how valiant uh, they were. We studied about those. We also knew about this um, uh, language movement of 1952 and how people were killed in a procession. And of course, uh, like how democracy were, you know, declining in Pakistan mm. day by day at that mm. point of time how East Pakistanis were always discriminated. So we learned about these things. Okay, so there are actually- uh, narration. Sorry, mm, sorry to interrupt. Uh, I, okay, there are facts, uh, whatever you shared with us, there are facts in that. And uh, I agree with uh, most of the things that you shared, but what is your point of view? Like how much do you agree uh, with, with whatever you are taught and whatever you just shared now? Like, do you think, uh, is there something wrong with that? Well, if I want to think it in this way, if, if a part of my country wants to get separated, so the last resort should be applying force onto that uh, place or on um, into that area. Mm. That is very much, you know, I can understand. Uh, uh, but mm. my question is, whether it should be a very much a military solution or there could be a political or diplomatic solution as well. Okay, so, so Eman, actually you're uh, right in saying this, uh, that there could be some other diplomatic solutions. Uh, I'm turning, I mean, coming back to the original point that uh, what uh, is being taught. Uh, well, I understand, and that's, I think, very much true. If it's being taught in this way, as long as no head is start toward anybody. I don't see anything wrong with that, number one. Uh, so if I compare it with the education system of, of Pakistan and what happened, uh, especially in 1971, uh, I don't know about past, but like in 10 well, to 15 uh, years. Yes, yes. I, I'm sorry. I'm, mm. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just need to add one point. Mm. That is, we, yes, there were some elements of hatred as well when we read, I just didn't mention. Mm. Like we always learned that Punjabi army killed, mm. raped. And so mm. Punjabi, and this term Punjabi was very much uh, into our education system, this yeah. Punjabi army and their I, long uh, mustaches. Yeah, and even yeah. in the Bengali different dramas and everything, they were being always portrayed yeah, in, they are narrated in that way. I think we have talked about it a bit even before this Punjabi thing. <laughs> yes. So, uh, okay, taking mm -hmm. discussion exactly. ahead from here. Uh, yes, uh, this is the uh, very, uh, this is one of the factors, uh, one of 
the thing that I also noticed in Bangladesh's education system, like even during the liberation war uh, and after whatever is written uh, on, on the accounts of war of 1971 or the liberation war, uh, it's always capitalized on the Punjabis because uh, it was a belief that uh, all Punjabis are in top military leadership and they are all in politics and they are the one, they are the ruling class. Uh, I would not agree to that thing uh, very much because, uh, okay, number one thing is that Punjab was the biggest province and the capital, Islamabad, it also it was later it was moved to uh, Islamabad as well, which is in Punjab. Although it's a capital territory, it's a separate territory other than the province. Uh, but being the biggest province and center, maybe it got uh, his uh, importance it got more importance. Number two thing was that from the Second World War and even before, if you see in history, you would see most of the Punjabis were in British army, like uh, even the Sikhs from Indian Punjab and Muslims from Pakistani side of Punjab, uh, most of them were in military. They have some military background. Even if now you go to the military cemeteries all around the globe, uh, you would find a lot of Punjabis in British army who fought and died in different fronts uh, during the Second World War. So they had a background, a military background. So that is a given thing. Uh, but uh, at the time when this problem uh, it rose, generals in Pakistan army, mostly it was General Ajub Khan who is being uh, targeted. It's General Yaksha Khan uh, and few other generals. And most of them are Pathan. They were Khan. They were not Punjabis, number one. And uh, another thing is, um, you know, Sharmila's, Sharmila Bose's uh, book, um, you, you must have seen that book. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't yes, agree to yes, each and I everything in her book, but then she also mentioned the fact that uh, Pakistani army was, they were referred as uh, Khan Chena, okay, or apologies for my words, but they, there was a term Shala Punjabi uh, used for anyone who is from West Pakistan. Yes. Uh, so uh, that was the mm, thing yeah. there, okay? Uh, now coming back to the original topic, like what we are being taught about this war and the liberation. You know, the funny part is that in our history or in our schools, we don't uh, mostly blame Bangladeshis for whatever happened. We mostly blame India, which is our like rival from the day one. Um, well, I also don't agree with that yeah. thing that there should not be this rivalry anymore. There should not be any hatred between these two countries and their issues should be resolved diplomatically. Uh, but, uh, okay, I'm just telling you the part of uh, history where we, we blame India for most of the things, even for the 71. Uh, but if you ask us about the common Bangladeshis, uh, before this time of social media, we even didn't think much about them. And we were always taught that, oh, they were our people, but because of this and India and India and all what happened is all because of India. So uh, they even don't talk about their own mistakes. Like there were martial laws that uh, uh, that affected our country, like, uh, but mostly they blame things on India. But now with the passage of time, we can see that uh, now people are more aware and then they can read any book, they can refer to any narrative, they can uh, see the perspective of different people in different countries. So they, they, are, they are wise enough to analyze the situation. So now we know that who were really responsible. It was our government, it, it was our leadership, it can be our military leadership, it can be our political leadership, uh, but not the people, of course. So uh, this is what we are being taught here. Uh, mostly we blame India for all this happened. And I think there was also a role of India as well if we, uh, if we talk about it, because these are both tribal countries and they would not let uh, go any chance which can help them uh, in, in their political like uh, objectives to achieve their objectives. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, like, uh... It, many players were there at that point of time. And of course, I think Pakistan created a scenario, which of course India would take the advantage of it. Yeah. I mean, if India would not take a, any advantage of that situation, I would be very much surprised. Yeah. 
uh, same so goes of course for india pakistan, did what it has to do uh, sorry to interrupt so same goes for pakistan like if there is a situation in india pakistan would definitely take advantage of it and it had happened in 1984 uh, maybe yeah. i'm not sure whether you're aware about it or not uh, but there was a situation like that but it yes. doesn't end uh, like what happened in 71 it doesn't end in the same way i think it happened just yesterday as well that farmers are protesting and the khalistan flag is being raised i uh, was being raised yeah. uh, somewhere and pakistan directly supported it <laughs> yeah so <laughs> and you know you know i would surprise you also that that uh, was not even the khalistan flag in my in in my knowledge uh, because that flag is the triangle flag All and right. that is mostly hosted over the uh, sikh temples yeah. and it's not really, really the political flag um, yes so, yeah but anyway this is the, yes, you know uh, one not. thing one thing i always emphasize but it was that, you know interpreted hmm, in that way it exactly exactly i have seen it on some media houses as well uh you know i would uh hmm. mention one thing that i always yeah, talk about something. is uh you know the creation of pakistan east pakistan and west pakistan this was the result of a political struggle there was no violence in it okay people died during the migration and there was a lot of violence that happened but that was in result that was not a uh, liberation war or something like all that struggle was a political struggle and the establishment of a new state was in result of a political struggle and we don't have much examples in past in history all around the globe uh, like where a country is fought a political war and they managed to get a country uh it's very rare uh so for mm. this uh, for our people at least they should have consider the diplomatic solutions all the time they must have not gone for the military solutions and they have seen what happened in 71 yeah of course and i completely agree with you there were many means uh but i don't know some people say the national security council that time actually advised the president um Uh, Yahya Khan that time that uh, okay this is the only solution that hum sabko kuchal denge so exactly. i think that uh, th- that was the term that he was advised and he being a military person very much accepted this proposal yeah you know uh, people blame bhutto a lot but i think bhutto was just a politician at that point of time i don't think he had well he has influence but if president could have i mean yeah yeah khan yeah, could do you know the thing is uh, first of all i'm very surprised to hear your urdu wow okay number 2 um yeah yes i can speak. okay then we we can have, we can talk a bit in urdu later on uh, so let me continue on the yah yah khan thing yeah sure uh, because this general yah yah khan he was of course the um, uh, martial arts administrator and he was holding the government uh, more responsibility lies to him but i uh consider bhutto also like equally accountable and equally responsible for this because uh he can see he he was really able to see that the clear majority was with sheikh mujib so even if he was not willing to give him transfer the power to him he could have come up with some other ideas uh, there there can be some political uh solution to to that kind of uh, in that situation but he also didn't go for that uh and i have also studied and heard a lot that even pakistani military leadership they were not very much interested in east pakistan that was the reason that uh east pakistanis were deprived deprived of facilities and developmental projects as compared to west uh because they they think that oh even if they stay with us or they don't stay with us it's still fine or maybe that kind of mentality was there which uh because of that they end up losing the eastern wing yes i think they, they were east pakistanis i think were neglected at, from various state levels mm. i think yahya khan had also some common this uh, bhukha nanga kala bangali and their this type of narration was very much developing that time in east pakistan that okay we are being neglected mm. we are being not given the equal opportunity in every state levels mm. so 
actually the people who fought for Pakistan once mm. and then they gradually became to hate it. I mean, but, you know, started to uh, hate it. I mean, honestly, so, uh, I have one. I mean, I, I'm the one who always uh, advocate for uh, then East Pakistan. But uh, at the same time, I also have some uh, something that I always complain about my East Pakistanis or my Bangladeshi uh, brothers who took part in this struggle. Uh, and the thing is that, uh, see, now being Pakistani, if something happens, if, if my government is not just towards uh, my people, uh, okay, let's say I'm a, I'm a group of people, I'm an ethnic group, okay, my, my government is not good towards me. So I would, it doesn't mean that I don't love my country and I, I, I will not uh, work for it or I will not, I would, I should not go definitely for a solution which is against the security of my country. So I always like think about it that you could have gone for other things. Why would you have to go get involved with our, in a way, rival India and seek their help even now like we have cases where we see some political parties asking for help from india uh, to achieve their objective so that is something i also don't understand at point at, at times yeah in that in that narration i can say that at, then you have to understand the very much inner ethos of the bengali people like since the British time, they have never accepted oppression easily. Mm. If you see the Battle of Baksar, and if you see the Bamboo Fort of Titumir has, you know, there are a lot of, so they even didn't pay tax, uh, didn't pay tax to British, like for many, many years. And that's mm. why British were mad at them. So like, they actually don't accept anything when they see that something is being imposed on them. Mm. Okay. So they fought for the right and when they got the right and when they saw that, okay, there is un unjust with us. Mm. So they gradually, you know, I think turn around and mm. especially after this Operation Searchlight, when yeah. you attack the people in the middle of the night, so it completely changed the mind of the people. Yeah, so they realized that I mean, no still, more, they cannot work anymore with this system. Yeah. And I think many people, even that time was also for Pakistan. They didn't want, I mean, an independent, I mean, independent Bangladesh. Yeah. Many people, even at that point of time, mm. they always wanted a complete independent federation. Yeah. Actually, the six points of Chef Mujib, you know, uh, it was very much a political solution, except for a few points, uh, which were about the like he said, defense and foreign policy should be with the center and rest, most of the things should be given to the provinces. Uh, and that's what uh, is happening in several other countries as well. Uh, that was very much, uh, you know, uh, applicable with some changes, uh, but uh, that was uh, rejected not only by the government of Pakistan, but also the other political parties, those who were in opposition, even those they have rejected mm. that. Even our Northwestern Frontier province, which is KPK now, uh, the political parties there usually is ANP, uh, they also rejected it. So uh, yeah, that was that is one of the things. And if, you know, uh, what uh, I read, I don't know who, who was that, who's the author. He said that if Sheikh Mujib was given power, he was given the power has been transferred to Sheikh Mujib after the election. Uh, he could not have survived for more time because the Bangladeshi people, the people of East Pakistan, they don't give much chance to anybody if he's not delivering. So that was his words. Exactly. That, yeah. And even that's why this 1971 even happened because they cannot mm. accept oppression on them. Yes. If, uh, yeah, but, and okay, since you were talking about six point demand, I think in the six point demand, there was also a term that East Pakistan would have its own paramilitary, paramilitary force. Yeah. Paramilitary, yeah. Is it true or what? Yes. What, do, you, do you agree Agree into, uh, do you agree to this point? Actually, if, if this is, that's what I'm saying, it was applicable. Uh, with some changes. So if the paramilitary force was just for the internal security, like what uh, Sheikh Mujib after the liberation of uh, Bangladesh, they, they made the, uh, another security force, uh, Rakhibaini or something. Yeah, Rakhibaini. Yeah, 
Rocky Bahini. Rocky yes. Bahini. Yes. Okay. So that was in that was yeah. also a law enforcement agency. Uh, it's a different story that later it was mostly used to oppress the opposition and the political opponents and exactly. for the security of Sheikh Mujib. But the purpose initially was uh, law and order. So if that paramilitary thing, which Sheikh Mujib proposed in his six points, if it was of the same kind of security force, I think that it's understandable to enforce the law and order situation. But if it again turns out to be another force, which would start working against the basic principle of uh, the unity and it becomes uh, like it gets somehow more power, then I think it can be dangerous for the security and unity of the country. Okay, I would also want to know that what do you think about the role of Mukti Bahini uh, after the liberation or during the time of liberation, uh, uh, what they have done with the Biharis and the West Pakistani people at that point of time. Do you have a, any 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 view okay, on that? So, okay, my stance on that is that uh, Mukti Bayani, of course, they played a very vital role in fighting uh, the war against Pakistan. Uh, but I still believe that uh, despite of all their power and energy, if they were not being supported by India, they were not uh, able to achieve their target, number one. Uh, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, manpower, uh, you know, being the polit student of political science, I really understand that it's not easy to fight against your state. It's not an easy job because your state has a complete infrastructure. Um, so unless you have a helping hand from somewhere else uh, and or unless there is a direct one-to-one -one fight, uh, there are very less chances that you can achieve your target. So Mukti Bhaini's role in fighting the war and their assistance uh, by India in terms of manpower, in terms of uh, weapons, uh, it was there. And, uh, that's, and then direct fight, like India's involvement on the base of human rights violation, so-called, I would say. There were, of course, I, I don't want to um, uh, hurt someone's uh, feeling by saying this, but of course, there were human rights violation. I, I agree and I understand that even those military, Pakistani military officers who were posted there, they also wrote a lot about it and they also admitted the violence against against the civilians. So keeping that aside, uh, yeah, Mukti Bayani had a role. After the liberation war, uh, what uh, my opinion is that uh, most of them were uh, being used in Rocky, Rocky Bahini, uh, and they were given the political positions. Things went against Sheikh Mujib because of all those policies that when people saw that Sheikh Mujib is not delivering for what we supported him. I think I have answered your question or if, if there's anything else. Yes, but I'm, I'm a little bit surprised to know that you didn't mention anything that Mukti Bahini ally killed oh, many yes. Biharis oh, yes. and oh, yes. uh, many many West Pakistanis. Oh, yes, uh, sorry, I, I, uh, I, I skipped, I forgot about that point, uh, even though you emphasized on that. Uh, okay, so the role of Mukti Bayani in that sense was, of course, it was there. And we know it, I don't know whether it's being taught in Bangladesh or not. Uh, it was never taught in Pakistan. No, that, it's not uh, taught, Mukti Bayani uh, killed the Biharis and pro-Pakistanis. But now with time, like we have more access to more literature and we, we know even we were not taught about it uh, although it goes in favor of Pakistani but narrative. not all of them I would say of course not all of them mm. not all of them some of them who were over excited and over enthusiastic. I think this is expected they did this, some, this reaction some is expected activities. like if you are being killed uh, oppressed and then now you have chance of course you would also do something so there is a chance uh, it's understandable. Yes, yes, in that perspective. But it was even from, I think it was uh, bad. I mean, of course, uh, it's not justified. If I were the head of Mukti Bahini, I would, I would tell them to restrain because they have lost and you give them shelter now. Of course, so it's I would never say justifiable. that to them. But it's never justifiable. Uh, yes. From that perspective, it was bad. 